Good morning, everybody. We're just getting started. Uh, hey, Lori, how's it going? Um, so, moving to, to call this meeting to order. Uh, it appears that we have quorum with me, Christopher, President, Kristen, and Carol. Okay. Hope everybody's doing well today. So, uh, first matter of business is the approval of the January meeting minutes. And I wanted to see if there was a, a motion to approve the meeting minutes for January's meeting. Motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. All right. Um, to approve the, the January meeting minutes, everyone who votes yes, please raise your hand or make verbal uh, yes. Carol? Oh, I had raised my hand. Oh, sorry. I yes. Missed. And yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. All right, uh, first other matter of business is some legislative updates. Uh, I was able to meet with Carson Gap from QITAS this week, um, and there's a few things that are uh, in front of the legislature that are of interest to us. First, there's a few uh, things happening with the budget. Uh, currently, there's a 54-54 split in the Michigan House um, due to some waiting for some special elections. And so right now they're really focused on working on budget stuff um, because other things may be very well be deadlocked. Um, so there's two things on the governor's budget that appear to be relevant for us. The first is uh, Medicaid reimbursement rates. Um, due to them kind of identifying that um, they don't have a lot of uh, providers who accept uh, Medicaid. And it looks like it's being suggested that um, they raise the non-physician rates, so that would include us, um, up to more be in alignment with what the uh, physician rates are. Um, I don't have the specific details on how much they'll be raising it, but usually counselors are reimbursed about 75% um, of the medical practitioner rate. And so hopefully we'll be seeing some, some significant change there, fingers crossed, um, because it does seem as though they're recognizing that they don't have enough uh, providers of master's level providers or non-medical providers giving them services to, yeah, go ahead, Carol. Is there any kind of timeline for that, Chris, that we know of? So if they're working on this budget now, that's actually to propose for next year's budget. Um, so usually the budgetary process for, for, so for the next fiscal year, so not 2025 January 1, but uh, the one that goes into effect like part of the way through 2025. Um, and so it's gonna, that's gonna be kind of something long on, on the horizon for us, um, but it is something that we, we could advocate for as well. Um, so it's not going to be in the, the short, short term, but hopefully soon. Um, and that was... The other thing that's coming up is a behavioral health workforce uh, allotment, which would support providers, organizations, and school partners. Um, basically, uh, I think it's about $500,000 of ongoing assistance for grants to support continuing ed, examination fees, and supervision costs, which is kind of an interesting way to go about it. And then a $3 million one-time uh, disbursement to public universities to support the expansion of internships and scholarships associated with behavioral health uh, coursework. So that's also something that obviously is good uh, in terms of helping people go from school um, and getting their internships done and then being able to move into the workforce. So some, some interesting stuff there. Um, 
And that is something that we can work on kind of talking with every legislator about. Um, so that's something we can talk to any legislator about and kind of get their input from on. Um, the other thing that we talked about was the LLPC bill uh, so that our limited license folk are no longer considered LLCs. Um, that was introduced by Representative Mike McFall and it's been referred to the Health Policy Committee. There's no hearing scheduled for it yet. Um, a few of us has been interested in getting information from us um, about who we would want to be able to testify when it comes to hearing. Um, and so there is some concern just about how uh, kind of the continued issues with uh, the other organization. Uh, they don't necessarily know who to go to, but um, I think Carson is aware that, you know, we're still trying to have him uh, operate for us. Um, was there anything else on that? Nope. And it looks like Carson will be joining us for next month's board meeting and going forward. Um, I did talk with him too about retaining their services. Um, it looks like there are still unpaid invoices from October, October, November, and December. Um, and kind of the discussion with him about that, um, we're gonna consider January, February to be a wash there, even though they were kind of the remaining aware of what was going on in relation to us, um, because they weren't doing active services, they're not gonna worry about that. Um, they would like to get started back in kind of active work for us on March 1st. Um, I had supplied the, the previous contract with Acuitas and uh, when talking about him on how to get that going again, he basically said, well, just for the most part, change the dates on that previous agreement so everything else will hold. Um, so if people can review that uh, before the next board meeting um, just to make sure that we're all on board with that and we can get that back over to Acuitas to get started. Are there any questions or discussion on that? Ask a question about that. Um, Kristen, I know we talked about the cost of that. Was there any conversation with him about movement on that? Or is that the fee we've been paying what we should budget for? Um, if we can, that would be the, the best thing. I did talk to him about two, two things with that. One would be a reduced amount um, in the short term. Um, the other would be getting on doing some sort of payment plan for it. Um, but the amount that they're charging us is already kind of a steal as it comes to lobbying services. Um, so I don't think we'll get any sort of long term reduction. They're willing to to change what they're doing, but um, I would be concerned about spending less than that on a consistent basis. Right. Okay. I, I well, okay. I can talk about that more when I go over the budget. I have a quick question i didn't quite hear um what are the the back payments that are due you said october november and december and, and december okay and we haven't made any payments in january february but they're willing to Be, because we hadn't uh re-signed the agreement they're they're fine with just kind of waiting on that um, okay. you know he kind of phrased that as being you know, mindful of our situation and, um, you know, basically being like, uh, you know, with those two months, since we weren't actively doing a lot, um, they also don't want to charge us for stuff they weren't doing. Yeah. Yeah. How much is that past bill for? Do we have a number for that? I believe that's 1600. Kristen, do you have an answer to that? Yeah. Yeah, it's 1662, I believe. Let me just double check that. Yeah, 1665, I'm sorry, uh, per month. So for those three. Oh, OK, months. per month. Yes. Yeah. All right. And that would be for a total past due, I think, of 4,995. Mm -hmm. Which. I think my concern, of course, in trying to figure out maybe payment plan for the back amount, but with the money we have access to at this point, we don't have that. So even currently in the bank, you know, so I think mm -hmm. it would be a challenge too. 
Yeah, and, and I'm really interested to hear about that in your report because so we can kind of plan for that. Um, but yeah, and what rate things are coming in at and whether we could even, whether we can sustain that uh, QITAS payment. Mm -hmm. All right, that's the end of my update for now. Um, as far as moving to committee reports, uh, we were gonna have Catherine uh, do an initial report as far as the, the work of organizing the elections um, for this upcoming year, uh, because as an interim board, you know, our terms only last until I believe it is June. And so we're make, trying to make sure that we have an election process in place that can give the amount of time necessary for all of the uh, uh, warning for calling for candidates and saying, hey, you know, this is when uh, announcing candidates and giving time to vote and such. Um, so we have to wait until March this meeting, I think, to get that update from Catherine. Um, next report would be Lori Rowe with the Bridging Committee. Uh, Lori, yeah, you have for us. Uh, yeah, um, we did get uh, the newsletter uh, out, uh, or it's on the website actually, um, and um, we're just sort of plunking away at this point. I'd really like to be able to get a brochure together so that we can get moving this spring on contacting colleges. But um, I'm not quite sure how to do that. I'm not, I don't feel competent in putting together a brochure about Mahaka. Um, if I'll take suggestions and uh, see what I can come up with. Um, or if someone is really, you know, excited about making brochures, I'd be certainly happy to talk to them. Um, okay. Yeah, I think there's a couple of resources I can kind of point you to. Um, I might be able to help with that. Um, okay. So let's get together some time uh, off meeting and I can go over those and kind of some different ways of, of doing that. Um, okay, great. I just basically don't want to be putting in content. Um, so if, if I can get some ideas on content and then if you can help me with layout and what to do about that, that'd be great. Lori, is there a previous one? No, not that I'm aware of. Any other questions for Lori or for Lori's report? Uh, next is uh, an exciting thing. Um, yeah, we're gonna. Somebody has anonymously donated a, a, a large um, catalog of videos on counseling on very in various areas, uh, including some of the old videos uh, on Carl Rogers and uh, resources that go all the way back to that time, as well as discussion, I believe, of Young and, and other theories. And we're going to be putting that uh, that library out on a YouTube channel. Um, it's going to be freely available uh, to the community, and that's going to be something Lori I wanted to mention. Uh, might be also a very good thing once we get it going to um, provide to the schools as a resource. Um, and I'm hoping that we'll be able to organize those into playlists of, of relevant things, so people can kind of find the thing that they want and then then go explore that. But the person who anonymously donated the, the resources uh, wanted us to make a dedication uh, of these new resources and the new video library. And so I want to read that. Um, so the donation is generous and extensive and was made anonymously. The donor wanted to dedicate the collection to Dr. Catherine E. James for her significant contribution to the counseling profession via her work on the Mahaka board especially in the areas of creating and maintaining the bridging program, a program dedicated to helping students and new professional counselors bridge from student to successful professional counselor. And for her work on both creating and delivering the unconscious bias training program and her many years as a counselor educator. 
the board is grateful to be able to make these videos available to the membership. And as a personal note, to be able to dedicate this to Dr. James. The board will be emailing members the YouTube link, or you can search YouTube for Mahaka, for Mahaka Library. And that's MMHCA, second word, library. So thank you to, to that anonymous donor. It's wonderful and appreciated. And I wanted to give a chance for any board members who wanted to speak or, or just kind of uh, recognize this, this dedicated resource um, at this time. I'm very excited about this. Um, in looking at some of the videos, I remember them from my graduate school days, a couple of them, and it's like, you know, flashback time for me. Uh, but what a fabulous resource. And I think the dedication is very much well deserved. Yeah. Thank you. And Carol? I agree, Lori. Um, Catherine has done so much for Mahaka and for counselors. It's it's very sweet that it was dedicated to her. And um, I've looked at the almost 100 titles and um, it's just a lot of fabulous materials. So um, Mahaka Library, that's all you have to search on YouTube is Mahaka Library. And we're gonna be putting them up a few at a time and um, sending a, a little note as we put them up to members. So, so you'll be aware. Thank you, thank you, very exciting. So that was a bit of good news. So, uh, and did anyone else want to say anything on that? Yeah, Kristen? I feel like I should say something. I'll just repeat what everyone has said, though. But thank you very much. That's very um, kind. I haven't had a chance to look at it. I did see the link, so I'll check that out today. But um, yes, very, very kind, very generous. All right. And so next we move to the uh, financial report and treasury's report. So, Kristen. Okay. Let me see if I can share. Whoops. I was going to try to share my screen. I don't know if I can do that. Let me here. You should be able to, but it might request. Uh... Oh, it just work. Is it up? Can you see it? Okay. Okay. Um, not much on here, but I wanted to show just because, especially we're talking about um, the the past two bills and um, Equitas, so I, or QTAS. So I wanted to show in January, we did have an increase in uh, membership revenue, about $3,500 came in um, this month. Uh, but as you can see for the fiscal year, that's, you know, we're getting closer to maybe those first couple of months. We had um, October is, seems to be historically also our largest month of growth. So this average is still with that October number, it averages to about $4,500 a month. Um, which we're not really seeing, you know, that that 12,000 kind of throws that average off a bit. Um, so I think this is probably, you know, in December, we have a much lower month. Um, in February, so far, we're off to a little bit of a, a, a lower start. So I don't expect it's probably going to be uh, quite as high as January. Um, we did pay uh, Debbie, or the admin assistant, um, this in January. We paid for both December and January. So you'll see that number is a bit higher in February. That's going to be closer to about uh, 380, I think, is what we what we paid her. Um, and then we also paid the neon. So we were um, we were behind on that. We were able to get that caught up, uh, paid for both December and January. So that's why you'll see that double payment in February. That will go back to that $256.47 uh, is the monthly fee for being able to collect members payments that way. Um, and then there was a bank charge of $26.06 this month, um, which I believe was another returned or declined charge through the, the other bank account. Um, so we're operating a little bit higher percentage uh, expense revenue this month. It's almost 40%, still much different than the 200 um, plus percent that we were operating at on average previously. Um, our totals in the bank are down here. Um, so we've, in January, the ending balance in our checking account that um, the accounts that we use is $11,007. We don't have access to all of that, that money at this time. Um, savings account has, has remained the same with just the typical 52 cent interest that 
we accrue every month. Um, and then we do have that reserves checking account, which is again down there where that uh, fee, a $26 fee was taken from. So you'll see the total in the bank accounts at the bottom of $82,822.75. Of that, um, you know, we have access to about just over 3,000 um, currently in the bank. So if we are thinking about paying some of these bills, our revenue is coming in at this pace, you know, that's where I was uh, maybe a high of 3,500 a month um, at this point. So in terms of paying the 1665, we could likely pay, and we can talk about this maybe a little bit more, but in terms of uh, starting in March and then a, a payment plan perhaps for the past due amounts. Does anyone have any questions or thoughts? Um, so one question I, I did have is, um, so I know this is why we've been trying to get together to have some uh, training events and whatnot. Um, I know Joy was heading those up and, and she wasn't able to be here today. Um, so uh, I think that's going to be a priority that we have to do. And then communicate, communication to the membership um, through some of the other programs that we've been talking about, putting on events um, to kind of engage membership, to kind of help restore some faith in the organization. Um, and hopefully, you know, once again, getting the positives as far as membership counts. I think that has to be a priority. But I think as far as our expenditures goes, Acuitas is probably the most important and the most impactful is towards the mission. Uh, so, I mean, those are my thoughts on it. Is there anyone else? Carol? Kristen, are you gonna be talking separately about the draft budget or? I believe that was going to be talked about in March, which I won't be at that meeting, but I was going to put those details um, together a bit more. It is over here on the side. I don't know if you can see that I did um, increase a bit just based on membership. But as Chris said, I think some of my thoughts and some of the things we talked previously about were how to increase membership and trust uh, in the organization. Of course, I think that also requires offering um, services. And I, I agree, I think the lobbying is our uh, most aligned to the, the mission and really important to membership. Um, and um, the workshops. So I know we talked about those workshops. I don't think you know, I, I'd responded, I'm, I'm sure some of you did too. So I have, uh, I was offering a time in March, but I'm not sure we didn't talk about charging for those or costs or, um, so I, I'm not, I'm not sure that that would generate income or I know we talked about implicit bias and some of those other, um, workshops. So perhaps we'll know a little bit more in March, but those are my thoughts for the, the overall budget, similar to what Chris is saying. Otherwise, I mean, if we just kind of go with here, I know Carol, we, we talked about adding uh, for the Zoom account and then also increasing the attorney legal fees, which I had estimated at 10,000. So that will probably be higher than that. Um, but at this point with, if we stay kind of on course um, and don't have any additional workshops and our membership stays consistent as it is currently, uh, it, it, we are in the red negative 18,227 for this year. If we plan to continue with um, the, the current lobbyist fee as well, um, and really just that kind of bare bones budget. Thank you, Kristen. And my understanding of the of the workshops that um, we were going to have board members offer was I didn't think we were charging for those. No, and that was well, for those that wasn't the idea. Um, but that the the effect of that is that you know once we're providing value and things for um, counselors, we might see revenue from uh, increased membership dues. So there's no direct cost to counselors for those things that we'll be offering. It would just be uh, hopefully a, a happy side effect of that. But we also want to get uh, events and trainings that are specifically um, also for the, for the purpose of, of being able to at least be um, slightly monetized to kind of help with our budget. Do we have anything on the calendars like uh, um, 
lunch and learn or anything that, you know, just a one hour thing on our calendar coming up? No, though, that was one of the ideas was either, you know, lunch and learn or the old chat and choose. Um, chat and choose. Okay. You know, I wanted to, and, and I don't think those were ever paid events, and I wouldn't okay. necessarily want them to be. Um, okay. Because I know networking was one of the things identified in the surveys as being important. I think it's better just to leave that for those. Mm -hmm. um, that was one thing I, I did want to bring up was finding out what locations are convenient for folks. Because again, uh, the unique geography of Michigan means that we, um, a lot of our folks could be even pretty far off from us. And I know that was part of the point of the ambassadors program. Um, that was going for the regional ambassadors program was to give, kind of give us contacts in different geographical areas. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think there's a, that that's been continued mm -hmm. or uh, supported, you know, uh, going forward. So I don't know if that's an option, but finding out where our existing people um, could do things like chat and choose or lunch and learns um, mm -hmm. to kind of further engage with counselors in their local environments and helping people to learn about each other. I mean, obviously I can, I can do the Lansing area, um, that would be, be the easiest for me. Um, but I think finding out who's willing to facilitate those meetings and uh, getting some on the schedule in the next couple of months would be a good plan. Right, I, I would like to volunteer um, to do a networking meeting um, we have a nice uh, space down here in Marshall. Um, it's it's called the Hub, and basically, I would rent out the room there. They have a nice, you know, um, it's not necessarily a bar, but it's got like drinks and some snacks and stuff like that, an office facility, and I can rent that area. It's got, uh, you know, some chairs and tables, anything like that. But um, I think that would be a nice, uh, I, I would like to put forward that I would volunteer to do a, a LPC networking meeting here in Marshall. Um, because I, I just got done last night with a smaller therapist network meeting that a local group of social workers put together that just opened their private practice. And I think eight people showed up for that. For Marshall, that's pretty good. And um, we talked extensively about how important it was just to hear what other people are doing, uh, share cards, you know, things like that, and not necessarily have a topic to talk about, but again, just a almost like a meet and greet, but I would call it networking because that's essentially what we did last night. I'd like to offer that to Mahaka members in this region. I don't know if people from like Owasso or or whatever would come all the way to Marshall, although I would suggest it. Um, there's some pretty cute things here, but, um, but yeah, I would like to throw that out and volunteer to put something like that together. You all give me a date, you know, that you would like to have me do that. And I'll do that. Um, and why don't we uh, talk about that? And I know Joy's been involved in a lot of the, the mm -hmm. basic like meetings and stuff. And so mm -hmm. we can also engage her with that too. Um, Cause yeah, if we can get something set up for, for, you know, before the next meeting, that'd be wonderful. I don't mm -hmm. know if there's going to be a lot of time or notice, but we can give it a try. Yeah, I I think for me down here, if if you give me, you know, two or three weeks heads up, I should be able to pull something together. Okay. That sounds awesome, Lori. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. All right. Anything else as far as the financial report and, and budgetary concerns? That was a little bit off topic, but it's all right. I don't have anything else. Sorry, I didn't know if you were waiting for me, but. Uh, you or anybody else, if anybody else had questions. I just thought um, one quick note is um, just to let people know that um, we we do want them to renew or to join the organization, uh, and they can do that um, at mm 
hca.org on the website. Okay, and so maybe organizing some social media posts to let people know that that's okay, um, and just kind of encourage them to do that and that it's it's safe to do so. And just also to know the website is not up to date. We don't have access to that part of the website yet. So um, for members who poke around on it, it, it is not up to date and we know that and we're sorry about that. So next thing on the agenda is old business. The only thing listed there is bylaws. Um, were people able to uh, review the bylaws since the last meeting? I guess people are going to check. So um, I've, I've gone over the bylaws pretty extensively. Um, myself and Carol have not met with um, our legal counsel just to kind of make sure that they're all up to standard um, and have been working out um, some final details. Um, so other than one area, they're kind of in a, a final draft um, that we're presenting to the board. Um, so please, if you have any thoughts on them um, or edits that you would like to make, uh, and you haven't had the time to do that so far, if you can try to get that to us by the end of February, um, your thoughts or any critiques or comments um, so that we can review those, accommodate them, and move forward with having a working set of bylaws that's updated and kind of prepared for um, the next board term. Go ahead, Carol. Chris, so um, would you say what we have now is ready to send out to members for their comment and review? Um, there's the one there's the one thing around uh, timing of elections that we have to work out before I want to do that. Um, so if we if we can sit down with that sometime uh, either over the weekend or next week, just as kind of uh, to go over. And then we can send it out to members. Um, the timeline I would like to hold for this is basically once we get uh, comments from the board, we'll then send it out to membership for comments from membership. And then uh, if there's anything we can accommodate there, great. Um, and then we'll move for, for passage of them. Okay. So a couple Sounds of in that process still. Okay. I would just like to say I I'm I'm really grateful for the work that we've done on them. I there's I don't think there's a much that changed substantially, but we strengthened the entire document. Um, so I I just think it's really really well done. And, um, so thank you. Yeah, and I don't think there's any radical departures from the old bylaws. I think this is mostly just updating them and uh, tightening them up. Uh, but, you know, if, if board members can get us their comments by uh, the end of March so that we can move forward with that process, I'd greatly appreciate it. End of February. Oh, end of February. Sorry. Thank you for correcting me. Um, can I just say, Chris, I'm sorry, I, I did, I was just pulling it up to see if there was anything that I, I remember. I read through it before and I, nothing stood out to me as any uh, feedback, so I likely won't have any, anything. Okay. Thank you, it looks great. So we can check in with uh, Catherine and Joy and see what the, if they had any, any notes um, that they wanted to add. Uh, Carol and I will work on the final kind of detail that we were, we were struggling on and then provided that that no one else has any commentary um, we can then release that to the to the members to see what their thoughts are okay and then in terms of new business uh, was there any other discussion on bylaws that anyone wanted to have before i move on larry 
Um, or, or when you send out just a thought, when you send out the membership for comments, maybe you might want to do that like as a, a Google Doc or something, or or you know, so people can make a comment that way, or you know, not maybe not a Google Doc, but the, the like when we did the survey, something yeah. like that, where where people could respond. That you could have it. There's a document for them to read, and then they could you could have a response placed in the bottom. That way, it would collect them all into a spreadsheet for you. Yeah, and I, I like that idea, especially doing like the survey, because I think a Google Doc would get too messy. Right, right. Uh, the, but do it like a survey where you could attach the whole bylaws, and they could read it, and then they could just make comments, have a comment, yeah, comment place. No, I think I think that's a good idea, and that's how I would want to go about it. Uh, yeah. Just because trying to get through everybody's comments on the Google Doc would would be a nightmare. <laughs> right, right. Um, but yeah, that I think that's a good plan. Thank you. All right, and then if there's no other questions, we can move on to new business. All right. Um, so the only thing that we have on new business right now is the uh, QTOX renewal. Um, I had previously sent out the, the previous contract that we had with QTOS. Um, and basically they just would like to change the dates and the signatures on that one and, and keep it the way it is. Um, if anyone doesn't have access to that, please let me know and I can share that with you again. Um, I know one of the con biggest concerns has been the, the budgetary one that, that Kristen mentioned, uh, which I think is fair. Uh, they are willing to work with us on what we can do or do payment plans. Uh, but I think it, it's vital that we we keep that up because um, it's our most impactful way of being able to serve members, in my opinion, at least. Um, that doesn't mean I'm right. It's just that I might be biased on that one. Um, and so if People can also review uh, that. And again, if you don't have a copy of it, please let me know and I'll get it to you, uh, you know, today even. Um, and let me know if you guys have any thoughts on that. Um, I would like to be able to, to have an answer for them as far as us moving forward or what, under what terms um, by the end of February. Um, and Carson was planning on joining us at our next board meeting uh, on 315. March 15th. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments on this portion? Kristen? Just wanted to speak. I hope it's okay to say these things, but I think that there's, um, you know, obviously some um, legal issues that we've alluded to or that 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 folks know about, and I think that is um, just to to provide clarity. That's getting in the way of our access to. Uh, the majority of our funds. So even though on my financial statement, it appears that there's $88,000 or I think um, in the bank, we don't have access to the majority of that. No one has access to the majority of that. So I, I just, you know, that's frozen at this point, pending legal outcomes, which is what um, is kind of keeping us in this holding pattern. And I know it might present as though we're not doing much or we're, you know, kind of stuck, um, but there is a lot of work being done behind the scenes. People are working on um, navigating that legally. So there's limited we can we can really say about that and limited we can really do uh, until that gets resolved, but that is in action. So in the interim, I think Chris, you know, to your point, we are trying to find a way to continue um, providing support to members and providing the advocacy and um, the lobbying that is so vital um, within the budget that we have access to and the funds we have access to. So really more in a short term, um, basis of, of course, legal things can take a long time. So short term is relative, but I just wanted to, to make that point. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that you made that point, Kristen. Thank you. Larry. Can, can I do a different new business? Uh, and we'd have to amend to, to, to change the agenda. Uh, well, I mean, I just want to add something to the new business section or, or just to make a comment about new business. A a comment, that is fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just just a suggestion um, with the with the video library um, that for people who are struggling with, you know, I don't have anything I could do with members. Uh, you could always do a discussion around one of the videos. Um, so the videos will be up there free. Um, but you could you could schedule a you know a, a Zoom meeting at a lunchtime and say let's talk about that Carl Rogers 
video on, you know, where he got the Academy Award, you know, and, and what that shows about group, you know, so you could use those as a as a springboard to some of those types of sessions that Joy talked about. Um, and you wouldn't have to, we wouldn't have to, we wouldn't have to develop anything training wise to do that. It could just be leading a discussion about the video or even play se small sections of it. So that's where Lori could come in, you know, she could go back to her, her college days and remember, <laughs> remember the videos and, and play a, a five minute clip from one of them and, and say, you know, what does this say about what we're doing now? That type of thing. Yeah. You know, I just answered um, a thing on social media on the advocacy page. Um, and what the, maybe I'm just getting old. I don't know what's happening, but um, there, there doesn't seem to be a good grasp of the historic mm -hmm. when it comes to our profession. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the comments that was made is that they feel like the profession is going downhill or disintegrating. And I think there was a lot more to that comment than I want to go into here, but um I think it would be lovely, and again, I'd love to do something with this educationally, is what it, what is our history, mm -hmm. you know? And I think the videos lend a perfect way to do that for folks so that they don't just see themselves working in this vacuum and all of the chaos that seems to be going on. It's like, no, we really do have a legitimate um profession here and it's growing positively mm -hmm. you know the the new theories that are coming out are exquisite but if you don't uh i i've always felt if you don't have a pretty good idea of where you came from knowing where you're going to mm -hmm. can seem really confusing and mm -hmm. uh upsetting sometimes to some folks so yeah I love I love the idea of the videos being accessible and using them mm -hmm. uh, for educational purposes, you know, targeting our members. You're 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 talking to the choir when you I say know that. because I, because I well I spent 15 years teaching history of psychology. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and one of the things the psychologists do right is they require every licensee to take a history of psychology class yeah. where you can learn where the profession came from, mm -hmm. you know, the whole mental health profession. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, that's, that's a, you know, that's a whole nother topic, but you're right. Understanding that background is real important. Yeah. I, I think it would help people feel more positive where we're at today. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Oh, okay, that was my suggestion. Thanks, Laurie. I appreciate that suggestion. I think it's a good one too. And it can be done either in person or online or something like mm -hmm. that. Especially like small group formats, mm -hmm. um, and I think it, it, it's also a good idea in terms of giving people professional identity, you know, it, and understanding what it means to be a counselor or a mental health worker in general, and where kind of the roots of that are, and to see how everything's changed. I, I can get into a larger discussion about that, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold off. I just realized I was about to go into a little bit of, <laughs> I apologize. Um, okay. So uh, was there anything else in the acuitas renewal? Uh, I'm gonna say, say no, okay. So I'm gonna motion to table that um, for now. So uh, I'm motioning to, to table the acuitas renewal of new business until future meeting. Do I have a second? A second. Um, all eyes, please raise your hand or by verbal assent, indicate yes. Any nays, please indicate your, you know, refusal by raising your hand or verbal uh, call out. It appears that it it, it is uh, passed to table that. Um, is there any discussion that anyone wants to have about any other topic uh, before we adjourn? All right. So um, just in review, if we can uh, have responses from the board by the end of February on the bylaws and just kind of a, a check in that, that you've reviewed them and that you don't have any comments so that we can move on with that process. 
uh, Carol and I will work on the last uh, portion of it and hopefully have that ready for you by then. Uh, we've tabled the Acuitas renewal for now. Um, I'm going to check in with folks uh, in the next week about whether they've been able to review the Acuitas agreement and um, getting any thoughts on it so that we can get that signed in whatever form that looks um, for us currently. And we have a few other things as far as events that are coming up um, or that we're trying to get on the, the docket. Um, Lori, if you can reach out to me and Joy about the um, kind of networking event in Marshall um, so we can see if there's any ways that we can support you and whatnot. Um, and then anything else that anybody wanted to go over today? Just checking to see if anybody had any thoughts. Then I'm going to motion to adjourn. I second. All who are in favor of uh, adjourning, please raise your hand or indicate by verbal assent. Anyone who uh, is against that, please raise your hand or indicate verbally. Motion to adjourn is passed.